Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to show you a new pen case that I received and also show you my fountain pen collection. About a month ago I watched a video from Mystery Arts and Crafts where she unboxed her gallon leather pen case in the Crazy Horse Brown, which was strange because for about a week straight prior to that I was trying to find more videos on this because I really really wanted it and then all of a sudden her video popped up and I felt like it was a sign from the universe so like I said this is a gallon leather pen case it is a 10 pen case I received mine in the crazy horse green I believe it's called um, I will link it down below she received hers from Goulet pens and they give you the original box as if you're buying it directly from Gallon Leather. They can be found on Etsy. However, I purchased mine from Van Ness Pens. I will also link them down below. The reason why I got it from them was because it was out of stock on Goulet Pens. I didn't want to order it directly from Gallon Leather because it does come from overseas and I am not a patient person. And number three, Van Ness Pens does free engraving and it is beautiful so I got my name engraved on the front I never get anything engraved I don't get my TNs engraved look at that look at that match oh it's so nice anyways I don't get my TNs engraved but I thought that this would be so nice to get my name on it I'm picturing my grandchildren great-grandchildren maybe inheriting this one day and if I were them I think it would just be so cool to see my grandmother or great grandmother's name on it and know that it was hers so I kind of got it for that reason and I just think it's very nicely done it's beautiful so like I said this is the 10 pen case it does have a YKK zipper which is very nice and you open it up and you get these two pieces of felt they are pretty thick so they're very durable they don't feel flimsy or anything you get these two flaps and you uncover it and you get five spaces here and five spaces here for your pens so I'm going to show you my collection and put them in here as I do that so the first one I have is the Twisby Eco in white and rose gold. You may have seen this in my previous video, but it is not the same one. This one is, let's see, this one is a medium nib. So I have this in a medium. So I will put that right here. And the Twisby Eco fits very nice. I don't know how long the Twisby Eco is, but I feel like if you have pens that are this size or smaller, they would be great. If you have a pen that's a little longer than this, um, I don't know that it would fit very well in here. Um, so we're gonna keep on going. So here is the Twisby that you saw in my One Book July video. This is the Eco in a 1.1 stub and I did ink it with Sailor Haha -ha after that video and I wrote with it for a little bit to see how I liked it and I'm kind of on the fence. It's a little bit of a dry ink so it doesn't come out as wet as I would like it to but it is a beautiful beautiful ink. So after this I'm going to show you how I ink my Twisbees and I'm going to ink another Twisby with the Lamy Azurite and then I'm gonna compare them to see which one I wanna use because if you saw my last video, you know I was kind of on the fence with Sailor Haha -Ha or Lamy Azurite. So I'm gonna kind of compare those two. So like I said, this is the 1.1. My next pen no, this is not Deja Vu. This is another Eco White with Rose Gold. This is Abroad. Wait for it. Dun, 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 dun. 
Oh yes, I have four of these with a one on the way in a medium because this is also a broad. I wanted two mediums, two broads, and one 1.1. 1 .1. So yes, I have four of the same pen. I did last week have the turquoise Twisby, the mint Twisby, the yellow green Twisby, and I don't know, I maybe had a quarter life crisis, if that's a thing, and I didn't want colorful pens anymore. I wanted uniformity, and so I'm actually getting, I ordered it yesterday, I'm getting another medium nib so that I can, no, another broad nib because I have two mediums. Currently I have one broad and one 1.1. 1 .1. So I'm going to get another broad nib to put there so that this side is all the same. Um, I don't know why I wanted to do that, just for aesthetics, I guess. It was kind of bothering me that they were all different colors and while they were pretty, just wasn't my thing anymore for some reason, I don't know. So we will put those aside. My next pen is the only colored Twisby that I have left is the yellow green. I did sell one and I still have one. So if you're interested, anyone, in a yellow green broad Twisby Eco, this is the T model, which means it looks like a triangle. It does have a little bit of a triangular grip, not as prominent as the Lamy does though. This is a very nice pen. It is the broad nib. She's the only colored one I have left and I am trying to sell this. So I will put that here. Um, another Twisby I have. This is the Prussian Blue Diamond 580 ALR. This is my favorite color, this color blue. So even though it does not match my other ones, minus that one, <laughs> even though it does not match, I had to have this. This is so beautiful. So we'll put that right there. And my next one is this beauty. This is a Birmingham Pen Company. The model is a Sixth Avenue and the colorway is called Cotton Candy. Now, the owner of Birmingham, I believe his name is Nick. Don't quote me on that. I want to say his name is Nick. I might edit that out if that's wrong. Um, <laughs> but he makes two models. He makes the model A, which has a more rounded ends, and then he makes the Sixth Avenue, which is a flatter end ended pen. I wanted this pen because back in 2016, Goulet Pens released their Edison Nouveau Spring Special Edition pen. And if you know, they release pens with Edison Nouveau. They release pens, I believe it's seasonally or twice a year. I think it's seasonally. So they make these pens and you can only get them for three months and or until supplies run out and then they're gone forever. They're special editions, so you have to be fast. Well, the one in spring of 2016 was this exact colorway, but it was called Water Lily. It was the Edison Nouveau Premier Water Lily. And I did not see it until the summer when it was already gone, so I missed out. For about three years, I tried to find this pen. I tried to find other makers making this pen. I tried to track it down with all of my being and it did not work. Well, I stumbled upon a few Instagram posts of Birmingham Pen Company's cotton candy pen and I fell in love. I will insert a picture of the Edison Nouveau Water Lily here and you can see that the ends are more tapered and it's kind of a skinny pen. I am so glad that I waited three years to find this one because I love this one so much more. Um, it does currently have a fine nib on it, I believe, but I can interchange this with number six. And I actually just received a shipping notification from Goulet Pens where I ordered a, I believe a broad 
or a medium, I can't remember. I think it was maybe a medium of a number six and I'm gonna swap that out. Maybe I'll do a video of how I swap that out if you're interested. So this side looks so uniform. When there's another one there, it'll be perfect. This side over here is kind of a hodgepodge. Um, so we'll just add another one to the mix. This is just my Pilot Kakuno in the clear and I got it in extra fine, and I just use this for drawing, uh, really just to be eco-friendly, so I wasn't buying the, what are they called? The microns and other drawing pens, using them, throwing them out. That's really the only use for this, and for some reason after I bought this, I have not drawn since. Usually that's how it goes. But that's here, it has bulletproof ink inside of it, so I just keep that there for when I want to draw something and then watercolor it. This one is so ugly. I, <laughs> I hate the way that this looks, but it was the only colorway on Amazon that had prime and I needed it quickly. This is a Moon Man and it is a dip pen. This does come out and you can put a real nib inside of it, which it came with, but I didn't need it for this purpose. I had a glass dip pen and it broke, and so I needed this quickly so that I could do some swatches. So that's all that this is used for, is for dipping into samples and swatching. Well, I don't swatch with this, I use a paintbrush, but just to write the names and things in my swatch book. Um, but yeah, this is hideous, <laughs> but oh well, it serves a purpose, I guess, form, no, function over form. Okay, well that is my pen case, and it is, as you can see, full, full of pens. So I'm going to show you how to, how it closes, what it looks like when it's closed. So it's very easy to close on the bottom. Once you get to the top, the felt pieces kind of stick out a little bit. So I kind of just fold those in and then it's no big deal. Fold these in a little bit because they will get stuck and I had a heck of a time opening it yesterday because it got caught right here and I thought I was gonna break it. So this is what it looks like closed. When it's full of pens, you can see that it gets a little bit buckly, I guess. Um, it doesn't really bother me and it's not damaging any of the pens, so I don't really care. Um, the bottom looks fine. Um, just because the caps are all up here, there's more, more pen up here than on the bottom, but it doesn't bother me. The two pieces of felt are touching each other so you know that your pens aren't being damaged at all. But overall, I love this. I love that all of my pens are in one place. I can just grab this and go. I don't have to worry about my pens clinking around in a pen case and getting like a pen bag and getting kind of messed up or anything. And it just looks so nice when you... Oh, that zipper. It's so satisfying. Okay, but it just, it's so nice when you... Ah, when you open it up and you see all your pens just ready to go, even though my challenge for One Book July is to use one. So this won't get much use, but that's okay. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how I ink up my Twisbees. Let me find the broad nib one. Oh, that's medium. Is it this one? Yes, okay. So we're gonna ink the broad nib one. So I just kinda fold those in. All right, and put that aside. And I'm going to show you how I ink my Twisby. So as you know, as most people know, the Twisby has the little mechanism here where you just kinda suck up your ink um, I, I don't do that. I don't like to dip my pen in the ink and I don't like when my nibs get all 
inky and then they always end up in crevices that you thought you cleaned and then you go to write and then your hands got ink all over it and for days and then it's just a mess. So I don't ink my pens like that at all. I use an ink syringe. This one has seen better days, so it is um, a little bent, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so I use an ink syringe. I'll put this together. This is about five years old. I did in my Goulet pens order that is coming with my new nib for my cotton candy pen, I did order another pack of these because they come in a pack of two if you order them from Goulet Pens. One of them broke and this one is on its way. So I did order a new one. So like I said, this is Lamy Azurite. It's a beautiful purple with a green sheen to it. So I'm going to open that up. Beautiful. All right. So we're going to ink this up. Okay, so usually people will um, put it all the way down, dip it in there, and then suck it right up. Like I said, I don't do that. So what I do is I take the nib and I pull. And what happens when you pull is the nib and the feed, the plastic feed, come off and they come off together. So you have to be a little careful that you don't lose any of your pieces. And then what you're left with is the body. And inside there, there's a little hole in there. And I will put my syringe right in there. So that's what I'll do. So I will take a little bit of ink here. Oh, that's my cat trying to get on the desk and I think he fell. <laughs> um, okay, so I put it in there and then there we go. Perfect. And then I'll just get a little bit more so it's full. I wonder if you can hear my daughter because I can hear her loud and clear. She's downstairs on the other end of the house. Supposed to be taking her nap, but she's in there making some weird noises. She's probably just playing with her toys. Okay, so then after I have filled that, I will put the nib and the feed back together. Um, there's like a little indent kind of right there. I don't know if you can really see that very well, but there is a little indent and that's where the and that's how you lose it. But <laughs> that's where the nib will go and you know that it's gone down enough so that it doesn't go down too far and then your pen is kind of out of whack. But I just take this and I put it in there and I push. And then it goes right back in there perfectly. And I have no ink on my fingers and I am happy. So I'm gonna come back in a minute after I've let this Kind of trickle down and then we will do a writing sample. Okay, so this has had enough time. It was about, it was only about a minute. Um, and it has trickled down and it is ready to write. So I'm going to, first I'm gonna grab the 1.1 that I had inked up with Sailor Manyo Haha, and we will, not that they're comparable, they're completely different inks, completely different colors, properties, everything, um, but I just wanna choose one, obviously, for my One Book July, so you can see I don't know if you can really tell, but it's like a bluish ink in there. And then you can really, I, at least I can, I don't know if you can, but I can tell that there is a beautiful purple ink in there. Okay, so this one is my 1.1.
and if you can tell, you can see that it's blue and pink and purple and all sorts of beautiful colors. You know, that would look really nice in my cotton candy pen because it kind of looks like cotton candy. All right, and then this is the broad nib with the Azurite on it. And I don't know if you'll be able to see the sheening because it's wet, but we'll see if you can see it in the writing. That is very, this is the Sailor ink is, I would say dry. It's pretty dry. It doesn't go down thick, even in the 1.1 stub, it does not go down very thick. It dries very quickly. It's a very dry ink. I would say the Lamy ink goes down thick. It goes down wet. It is a very wet ink. And if you can, if you can see a little bit, I can see a little bit of the sheen in that little sample there. I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll see if you can see more of the sheening, the green sheen to it after it dries. So I will be back in half a second for you. Okay, I'm back. I let that dry for a few minutes and let's see if you can see that green look at that that's so pretty oh that made it really difficult i don't know let me know down below which one you think i should use for one book july oh they're both so nice <laughs> so i don't know well, i'm going to end my video here thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed seeing my pen collection my pen case and i hope that watching me film my Twispy was not nerve-wracking to anyone. <laughs> um, I don't see many people fill it the way that I fill it, but it keeps your hands clean. All right, well, I hope everyone has a great day or a great night wherever you are in the world, whatever time you're watching this, and I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.